Greetings. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the new Calculus Channel. And today I'd like to ask the question, once again, what exactly is the unit in mathematics? Uh, a vitally important concept, because without it, you can't understand number, and you can't even do uh, any of the things, the important things that you need to do in mathematics, which consists of uh, those objects that we call numbers. So before I do that, I'd like to, I'd like for us to watch a video, but let's just hold off on that for a moment. Um, after Euclid, I was the only one to understand that what Euclid had attempted to do was to write down a perfect derivation of number. And we can choose the unit from any random magnitude. For example, if we needed a length magnitude, we could choose that distance or that distance or that distance or this distance. And now notice that these distances are simply the measure of the length between the endpoints. There is no such thing as an infinite line. That's a myth, okay? Infinity is a junk concept. So <clears throat> let's watch a one minute video clip to see how little mainstream mathematics understand. And the paper is infinitely big. So you can't do a line of 20 centimeters? Well, Right sort of. So that's a very good question. Um, if you're given a line of one centimeter uh, by, you know, by God, <laughs> then uh, uh, you can do a line of 20 centimeters because you can draw one long line. Okay, <clears throat> so here's the link if you want to watch that entire video. The mainstream academic that we saw in that video has a name. I'm going to call her Susan because it's easy to pronounce. And she believes that any unit is predicated on a physical magnitude. So, for example, she said, the interviewer asked her, so you can't draw a line of 20 centimeters. And she, she responded, sort of. That's a very good question. If you're given a line of one centimeter um, by... God. <laughs> and then she says, um, then you can draw a line of 20 centimeters. So it's very clear that Susan's understanding of what is a unit relies on her belief that there is such a thing as a perfect centimeter that can be used in physical measure. However, mathematics does not require physical measure or even that anything physical or otherwise, for example, supernatural exists. What Susan and her thousands of ignorant colleagues have never understood is the concept of the abstract unit, which means they could have never understood measure or number. <clears throat> now, the abstract unit, which by the way is perfect, requires no specific magnitude and it is dimensionless, right? It doesn't have to be a centimeter or a mile or a light year or anything else. All that is necessary is that it is defined as the ratio of the magnitude to itself. That is, if u is a particular magnitude, it doesn't have to be a length magnitude, it could be a mass, area, volume, any other particular magnitude you care to think of. If it's being compared to itself, it gives rise to the idea of the unit. So u is any magnitude and the ratio u compared with u, u compared with u, means the comparison of the magnitude with itself right? And then everything else we measure is based on u. So that if it's a multiple or a factor of the unit, uh, we can give it a name accordingly as a ratio. So we can call every number or name every number as a ratio. Let's see how. <coughs> Excuse me. Suppose that the length magnitude u is given by this particular line length here. Then this line length compared with this line length, or just one colon one, denotes the unit length or the unit itself that we're using, right? So any multiple of u 
can be written as follows. So if we wanted to, if we wrote, took three of these lengths and put them together like that, compared with one of those lengths, then we get the idea of three or three units. Similarly, any factor of u can be written as, as follows. If we just have one of those compared to three of those, we get the idea of one compared with three or a third. So three colon one came to be written as three over one does not mean three divided by one, by the way, it's no division is pending there. Or three stroke one, three divided by one or three stroke one, these two here are, are the same, eventually became just written as three, okay? In other words, we don't care to write the colon one or the vinculum one. And of course, one colon third, which is a third, came to be written as one over three or one stroke three. So we derive all numbers simply by the chosen unit, whether it's a multiple or a factor. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see, the abstract unit does not care about the magnitude specification. The unit can be of any length, mass, area, etc. This video was created as a result of a question by one of my subscribers, John Wasser. Uh, he asks in his comment, let's just go there quickly. He says, you say a number describes a measure of a magnitude. How does this definition apply to counting things? Well, pretty much the same way. Counting is derived from the abstract unit, which is dimensionless. Counting is also a measure with only one difference. It is done with multiples of units. Those things that you call the natural numbers or the whole numbers or the counting numbers. Is there a perfect unit? Let's see, think about that. P hit the pause button here before you go to the next screen, to the next slide. Yes, there is a perfect unit and it's called the abstract unit. Real mathematics, not the rot of mainstream mathematics, is based on nomina, which exist independently of the human mind or any other mind. For any magnitude that cannot be measured by the unit or parts of the unit, there does not exist any number to describe it. Because a number describes the measure of a magnitude, or a number is the measure of a magnitude. So for example, pi, square root two, e, et cetera. Those are not magnitudes which have numbers to describe them. There is no number describing pi or square root two, et cetera. I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation on what exactly is a unit and that you will have been enlightened so that you can now understand numbers and become good at operations with numbers such as fractions and algebra and calculus and all that other good stuff. <coughs> I'm John Gabriel and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.